James Harden is one of the greatest scorers in the history of the league. However, as great as he's always been, he hasn't been safe from criticism from the fans, analysts, and even his peers. Check out what these 10 NBA stars think of him. Number 10. Kevin Durant For years, people have questioned James Harden's ability to lead a team. They've called him out and said he doesn't have what it takes to win when it matters the most. But for Kevin Durant, he's one of the most talented offensive players in the history of the association. And you can tell by the way other players guard him. I'm talking about one scenario. On the ball, on the ball. Don't talk off the ball right now. On the ball, if two people run into the half court, tell me the difference between it happening with Steph Curry and James Harden. Same result, that's all I'm saying. Off the ball, it's different. Steph creates way more opportunities off the ball because he can catch and shoot quick and he run off. I'm not talking about that scenario. I'm talking about dribbling up the court with the ball in your hands and two people come up, Durant said. Also, KD knows Harden better than most of the players in the league. They were teammates when they were young up-and-coming stars in Oklahoma with the Oklahoma City Thunder and teamed up once again with the Brooklyn Nets. I know how much he cares. I know how much he wants to be in this moment. It sucks. Wishing him a speedy recovery. Keep him involved as much as possible. It's just a bad break, Durant said when Harden got hurt in the playoffs against the Bucks. Number 9. Chris Paul Even though most outsiders tend to say that James Harden is a bad teammate and that he drove his teammates away from the Houston Rockets, not everyone seems to agree on that take. But if you were to ask Chris Paul, he acknowledges that they should have had better communication outside of the court, as he felt like Harden shouldn't hog the ball when the games were on the line. You have to be able to have them conversations. And the thing that frustrated me the most was that first year, I wasn't healthy. It's crazy. Them years in Houston are kinda a blur, to a certain extent, because there was so much going on at the time. But dang, we was good. We was real good, said Paul. Even so, Paul gave Harden his flowers and acknowledged that he's one of the best scorers to ever make it to the league. And James, I still say it, can't nobody score the ball like he can. It's crazy, man. I wouldn't trade any experience or whatnot, but I wish we would have had some of those conversations. But most of all, I wish I would have been able to stay healthy, Paul concluded. Number 8. LeBron James LeBron James may not be James Harden's favorite person in the world. At the end of the day, it was LeBron and the Miami Heat who were the ones to beat him in the NBA Finals and the only time he made it to that stage. Harden vastly underperformed in that series and was eventually traded to the Rockets, where he'd blossomed to become a perennial MVP candidate, even ahead of LeBron from time to time. LeBron James is no stranger to James Harden's talents. The King has been vocal about how much of an unstoppable offensive force Harden is, going as far to call him one of the greatest scorers in NBA history. That's just one of the greatest scorers we've ever seen in this game. He's going to take some shots, and he's going to make a lot too, said LeBron. That's a huge compliment coming from one of the most dominant NBA players of his generation. And maybe they'll meet again at basketball's ultimate stage soon. Number 7. Jimmy Butler Jimmy Butler seems to agree with LeBron James' assessment. Recently, he called him the most unstoppable scorer in the NBA, lauding how easy it was for him to put up video game-like numbers against the fiercest defenders. Step back floater, Euro step, he has so much in his package. And he's always hitting tough shots. His whole attack is built off that step back. He hangs the ball out there and teases you with it, and then he waits for you to make a move. He's reading you. Whatever you decide to do, he's got to counter for it. Because if you give him too much space, he's going to take that step back and probably make it. If you get too close to him, if you try to get up into him and take the shot away, he's either going to lean into you and draw a foul, or blow right by you and take it to the basket. He's one of those guys you game plan for. Like you go into the game saying, we're not going to let James drop 40 on us, and he still drops 40 on you. That's the mark of an unstoppable player. I think if you ask multiple people who the most unstoppable player in the league is right now, it would be a toss-up between a healthy KD and LeBron James. But if you ask me, it's James Harden for the win, Butler said. Number 6. Giannis Antetokounmpo But for every person who lauds you, there's usually going to be someone who doesn't like you at all. And Giannis Antetokounmpo and James Harden have never liked each other, and likely never will. It all started when Harden took a swipe at the Greek freak by saying he should have been the MVP. He added that Giannis had no skills and all he did was running and dunking, whereas he had to actually learn how to play basketball. And Tentacunpo, competitive as he is, didn't hesitate to fire back at him during the All-Star game. When asked why he didn't take Harden in the All-Star game draft, Giannis simply said, I want somebody that's going to pass the ball. Then, following the game, he took another shot at Harden by saying, Offensively, we were just trying to find whoever James Harden was guarding. That's who we thought we'd have the opportunity to score on. 
Giannis has already gone the distance and won an NBA championship, a finals MVP, and multiple individual awards. So, for now, we'll give him the edge over Harden. The ball's in your court, James. Number 5. Joel Embiid In reality, Harden will have a tough time putting up the same numbers in Brooklyn as he did in Houston. That's why he's not likely to catch Giannis Antetokounmpo in MVPs anytime soon. Then again, he won't hesitate to change his game for the sake of the team if that means having another shot to win an NBA championship. Which seems like a huge possibility playing side by side with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Recently, Joel Embiid lauded him for the adjustment he made. Going from being the alpha dog and the Rockets' go-to guy, to giving up shots and setting his teammates up, even if that meant his scoring numbers would go down. The way things ended in Houston, obviously, it was unfortunate. But I see he's been dominant, carrying that Brooklyn team, being a point guard and doing what he needs to do. Especially considering he's had to change his game in a lot of ways. Going from taking all of 25 to 30 shots a game, to just being a playmaker and actually being okay with it and actually doing a great job at it. I think he's doing a good job, said the Sixers big man. Number 4. John Wall People gave Harden a hard time for the way he left the Houston Rockets to join the Brooklyn Nets. And I'm not talking just about the fans or some analyst, but also his teammates. Most of them felt disrespected by the way he showed up to training camp and how he addressed the situation. And some even were relieved when they saw him walk out the door. That was the case with John Wall. Wall had recently joined the Rockets in the Russell Westbrook trade, and was motivated to prove his worth after a two-year layoff with injury. Harden, on the other hand, had no intention whatsoever of waiting to see whether Wall could go back to his former self. The team wasn't where we wanted to be, and we had people that didn't want to be here. So it's kinda hard to play through that. Once the trade happened, we got the team that we wanted, and guys that wanted to be here, Wall said. Ironically, Wall's tenure in Houston wasn't exactly successful either, as he missed most of the season with injury management. Harden, on the other hand, was pretty close to a trip to the Eastern Conference Finals. Number 3. Jason Tatum Polarizing as he is, not even the best scorers in the league can deny that James Harden is one of the greatest offensive talents of all time. A couple of years ago, he scored 30-plus points in 32 straight games, trailing just Wilt Chamberlain for the longest streak of all time. That made Boston Celtics star Jason Tatum believe that he should have won MVP over Giannis Antetokounmpo in 2019. You, the media, were splitting hairs last year and choosing between those two. I don't think there's a wrong case, but to me, it's James Harden. When he scored 30 for like 42 games in a row or something like that, Chris Paul was hurt a lot, and they were dealing with a lot of injuries. It's just, what he was doing was pretty remarkable, Tatum said. Number 2. DeMarcus Cousins DeMarcus Cousin isn't one to mince his words about anything, and the way James Harden left the Rockets clearly infuriated him. Obviously, it's disrespectful, but everybody has a right to their opinion. We feel a certain type of way about some of his actions. This is the nasty part of the business that gets kind of swept under the rug. You deal with some of these things. When guys are in possessions of being franchise players or whatever the case may be, it's usually sometimes a nasty breakup. Just the approach to training camp, showing up the way he did, the antics off the court. The disrespect started way before. This isn't something that all of a sudden happened last night. But with that being said, like I said, this is the nasty part of the business. So it is what it is. I just feel like it's a way about handling business. He can feel however he wants to feel about the organization, or whatever his current situation is, but the other 14 guys in the locker room have done nothing to him. For us to be on the receiving end of some of the disrespectful comments and antics, it's completely unfair to us," Cousins said. Cousins isn't the star he used to be anymore, but being a former All-Star and League veteran, Harden's attitude may have hurt his ego. Number 1. Joe Harris A lot of people talk about James Harden's scoring, and rightfully so. But perhaps his passing is nearly as impressive. Ever since Mike D'Antoni put the ball in his hands and allowed him to run the offense, he elevated his playmaking skills and made sure to get everybody involved. In fact, Joe Harris went as far as to call him the best passer he'd ever played with, even ahead of LeBron James. First and foremost, James is an incredible basketball player. I think the one thing that's pretty underrated in his game is his ability to pass the ball. He's by far the best passer I've ever played with, just like you mentioned. If you get even a sliver of space, the defense might relax, whatever. The ball's coming your way. He really reminds me of playing with D'Angelo Russell. D'Lo was an unbelievable passer when he was here in Brooklyn, being able to control the game, facilitate. But James, because people are worried about him, his offensive ability to score, he sort of lulls people to sleep every now and then. It makes my job easy because I know that the ball's coming my way more often than not. I have room and rhythm and I have to be aggressive taking those shots, Harris said. Love him or hate him, no one can deny that Harden is historically a great scorer. But will he ever win an NBA championship? 
Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button for more top NBA content.